Okay, good day guys, good day to you all. Welcome back to the Formula Sports channel. Thanks for being here. One, smash like button. Two, subscribe if you're new. Those are the general rules, free and easy way, ways to support the channel. So, you know, as we continue to dissect and, 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 and think about that, that Costa Rican performance that would have left many of us, including myself, impressed right with with what transpired on the, the the field of play actually wanted to do this video yesterday but i am doing it now i'm doing it today so you know didn't get a chance to do it yesterday i want to just you know talk a bit about some of the players that really stood out or some more of the players that really stood out in that game for me um i did a video and dropped it yesterday talking about some of the younger players that would have stood out, right? Like the, the Richard King and the Lamar Walkers, you know, those players stood out for me in terms of their impact on the on the pitch. And now we, 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 you know, that video was more dedicated to us, the younger players, so to speak, right? You know, and this one, I want to talk a bit more about the performances of, of some of the, the more senior players in the team right for starters um bobby reed i think bobby reed had a very very good game and it is without a shadow of a doubt the best game we have seen bobby d card over reed playing the national team um somebody had said to me i think it was in the it was the watch along if memory serves me right that i don't remember where it was but somebody was saying to me that bobby reed plays better for us as a number 10 than as a winger Right, and the person really and truly was spot on, right? The, the the best performances that I can think of from Barbary came as a number 10 and really and truly, you know, yes, we know he can play out wide for Fulham. You know, we know that. We, we have seen him do it and seen him do it well. But for some reason, when he plays out wide for us, he seems to be lost. I don't know why, but he seems to be lost. But in this particular game, I think Barbary did very, very well. Right, he was playing as a as a, a a deeper kind of number ten, you know, and you know he he did very well. I think he did brilliantly with with linking the play. That was his main role in this particular game to find those pockets of space in behind the initial line of Costa Rican pressure. You know, present those forward passing options. Right. And, you know, one receive the ball and two progress the ball. Right. Being that, that you know, providing that linkage. And I think Bobby D. Cardova did it very well. And he also provided some creativity as well. We saw some final balls from Bobby D. Cardova Reed breaking the, 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 the last line to get strikers in behind. So Bobby D. Cardova Reed did very well. And I think that relationship with Lord Ravel. Speedy and Bobby D. Cardova Reed on the pitch was 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 very was a it was refreshing for me to see personally how those three were were working together to to move the football and to progress the football right so Bobby D. Cardova Reed did well man Bobby you know I we, we, you know we, we started to see. The, the last game against Panama, he didn't do too badly, but I still think he could have been a bit more involved in the game, right? The game before the, the, the Costa Rica one. And then he had that very good assist to the latter stages. I don't know if that brought his confidence back or what, but, you know, the, the, the player really um did well in this game. So can we officially say that Bobby D. Cardova Reed is back? Can we say that Bobby Reed back? You know, he is one of those players that should be very important for us going forward for the next World Cup cycle. If I'm not mistaken, he's 27 years old, right? So he she should be featuring heavily for us going forward as well. Um, The next player we want to talk about, Mr. Ethan Pinnock, Rupert, a.k.a. Rupert Boy. Ethan Pinnock is a very good player. I don't understand how people used to chide Ethan Pinnock and a lot of Jamaican reggae boys fans didn't really seem to be big fans of Ethan Pinnock and I couldn't understand why. You know, they weren't impressed with his showing in the USA game 
and also in the Panama game, right? The only time Rupert ever put wrong, ever put a foot wrong for the national team, guys, is when he got turned at the byline by Sargent in his debut in the USA game. That's the only time Rupert ever put a foot wrong, guys. And honestly, I think he's a better player now than he was then. You know, many of us, in Su including myself, was a bit hard on Ethan Pinnock for, I don't want to say abandoning, but, you know, for choosing Brentford over Jamaica in the summer when he could have, you know, come and played in the, 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 the Gold Cup for us, but chose Brentford's preseason instead, right? I, I was a bit hard on him back then, but honestly, I think it was the best decision for him in hindsight. I, you know, when I look at him in the championship last season and I look at him in the Prem this season and also for the, the, the national team, I think he's a different player. I think he looks a better player to me. And I think that work that he did with Brentford in the preseason, because that's the reason why he chose Brentford, you know, to, to prepare himself. To, to, to be able to adapt to the English Premier League. And honestly, I think he returned to us a better player. I think he returned to us a better player, right? So honestly, in hindsight, I think that was the best decision he could have made, not only for his own individual career, but also his national team career. You know, he, you know yes, he was a very good player in the championship last season, but we, we, we saw some, some, some flaws in his game or some you know, some weaknesses to his game. But this season, man, Rupert has been a monster, man. A, a, a very good player, a more rounded player, in my humble opinion. In this game against Costa Rica, he was a beast, an absolute beast, right? When they talk about a ball-playing centre-back, right? Carrying the ball from out the back, that's, that's a major requirement for the modern-day centre-back in today's day and age, right? We saw that 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 player who plays on the left side of a back three for Brentford was side with the national team, right? You know, his ability to, you know, advance the play from out the back. And we saw him get into some relatively, you know, higher positions on the pitch and had a very good impact. We saw that link up play with himself and Greg Lee down the left flank, like, you know, you know, that relationship between him and Rico Henry down the left for Brentford. We saw that with him and Greg Lee down the left for Jamaica. And both of them, they worked very well together. Very well together in helping to progress the ball down the, 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 the left channel, the left wing channel. And also, you know, they would have assisted in a number of times in terms of when the points of attack were elsewhere and there was not space to progress the ball, they would have helped in the recycling of that football, right, to move it out of those pressure situations and, you know, the play being switched out to the left and, you know, them basically attacking space down the, the, the left um, wing channel or exploiting spaces on the left wing channel when the play was switched or when the point of attack was switched. So, honestly, man, you know, Ethan Pinnock is a beast defensively, and he is a beast offensively as well for a centre-back. He's another player that really and truly should feature heavily for us going forward. He's of the age where he can indeed play another World Cup cycle, right? Greg Lee, Greg Lee, Greg Lee, Greg Lee. This is a, a full-back that many of people seem to be huge fans of, and honestly, given his performances so far for the national team, I can't blame them. Somebody said that Greg Lee looks like a Kimar Taximan Lawrence in his early national team career days. Honestly, I think that is spot on, man. Greg Lee, when he plays for the national team, he looks hungry, man. Sizzling, sizzling, just running the, 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 the left wing channel, man, right? You know, you, you, you saw him being so assertive in 1v1 situations, right? And, and, and taking on defenders, taking on fullbacks and getting past them and beating them and whipping in some good crosses into the box. And also there's one particular play where we saw him get past like two Costa Rican players trying to, you know, cut inside into the half space, 
you know, he was fouled and we won a free kick in a dangerous era. By the way, Rupert did that as well too, you know. There were plays where we saw Rupert take on players and beat them as well. So, you know, sh should we continue to see that peering down the, 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 on the left-hand side of the pitch for us, right? You know, we should definitely look at it again and see how it looks going forward, but it really looked good in this particular game. And, you know, yes, he had a little momentary lapse in defence, Greg Lee. Admittedly, he probably could have done better on that particular play, you know. But I'm not going to knock a man for one mistake. Def you know, with defenders, the sad thing about defenders is that their mistakes are, are more evident. Them and goalkeepers, their mistakes are more evident than attacking players or midfielders because their mistakes often get punished. And unfortunately, that happened to Greg Lee. But I think generally speaking, man, he was so amazing down that um left wing channel that honestly or that wide channel that you know we still have to say the player ball, man. I still have to say the player ball. Lord Ravel is up next. Guys, it's undoubtedly Ravel Morrison's best game in the for the national team. You know, I was very, very disappointed with what we have gotten from Ravel Morrison in this World Cup qualifying campaign. The only time Ravel really played well in this World Cup qualifying campaign was the substitute appearance against El Salvador. I can't think of another time when, you know, Ravel Morrison really and truly did well for us in this World Cup qualifying campaign. Um, to be fair to him, he wasn't too bad in the in the Panama game either, the, the, the one that we played away in Panama. You know, I think he was one of our better midfielders on the day. Truth be told, in all fairness, um, he made some mistakes in that game, both defensively and offensively, but he was a little bit more involved in the game than normally speaking. But he still could have gotten himself far more involved. And, you know, that's one of the knocks that I've had against him. You know, he hasn't really been that controller for us in this World Cup qualifying campaign in terms of getting on the ball and guiding its progression up the park. But in this particular game, he was brilliant, man. A lot of people criticize him and say, oh, he was given a lot of space. You know, I disagree. You know, he was the first pivot. He was the first player that got on the ball, you know, and Costa Rica was sitting in a mid to low block. So, yes, there was some space initially, but there was a number of times when we saw Ravel take the ball and progress the ball into very tight areas of the pitch and did well in those tight areas. Right again, that link up with him, Speedy and um Bobby D. Cardova Reed. Right, he was that controller for us, man, guiding the, the, the progression of the football, guys, making that first pass, especially to break that initial line of Costa Rican resistance. Ravel balled, Ravel controlled the game, he controlled it, man, and we have to give him props to that, man. Finally, we, we, we have seen Lord Ravel really show up in this World Cup qualifying campaign. A little bit too late, but hey, a little bit too late. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention with Bobby Reed. I was a little bit upset when Bobby Reed came off him. You because know? Bobby Reed was balling up until the point that he, he, he was subbed off him. You know? Can't understand why, but his replacement did relatively well, in, in all honesty. Speedy. Last player I want to talk about in terms of the ones that balled, Speedy. Speedy did well, guys. Speedy did well. Um, you know, he was he was more he was the more advanced of the two players in the pivot, right? But you know, many people would say that that speed is best role. Many people would say that that is speed is best role, right? And that he's really and truly not not a deeper line playmaking number six. So you know, but Speedy did well. Speedy did well. You know, again, that relationship with the three of them in the middle of the park worked really well. I liked his movement to be that out ball, you know, to be, you know, to be that out ball to break the initial line of pressure and to, you know, um recycle the ball. You know, I I I think he was he was very good in this. This is one of Speedy's best games for sure, for sure, man. Speedy did very well in this particular game, man. So let's see how Speedy is utilized going forward. Although Speedy is 29 years old right now, you know, should Speedy be, 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 be 
you know, a part of our plans for the next qualifying campaign. Who knows? Let's see. You know, um, but, you know, that's it for the most improved reggae boy. One reggae boy is a little bit disappointed in is Mikel Antone. Right? You guys know I'm a huge fan of Mikel, but Mikel was playing, you know, as that deeper line, you know, second striker whose main aim and main objective was to link the play. You know, a number of plays broke down because of Mikel. A number, whether it was a bad touch or a bad pass, you know, Mikel really and truly, you know, could have done better in this particular game for me personally. Um, even he got some good goal scoring chances as well. One of them he could have done better on. The other one, to be fair, it was a very good save from goalkeeper Kaylar Navas. Right, but you know, I expected everybody really turned up in this Costa Rica game for the most part. I think Mikel was the worst player on the pitch for the reggae boys, in my humble opinion. Honestly, honestly, I'm just being real, right? Um, we saw even to the latter stages of the, the, the first half where Paula switched it around and had Andre Gray drop deeper and Mikel Antonio run the channels because Mikel Antonio was doing such a, a, a poor job at linking the play. But guys, that's it where, you know, the performances are. Andre graded decently as well, to be fair to him as well. He did okay. So, you know, that's it for the performances in the Costa Rica game that I really want to highlight. Guys, stay safe, take care, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, and until next time.